morning, y'all. <coughs> Holidays are over, but of course my allergies aren't gone. And this weekend, as a realtor, I was out showing property, showing property, showing property in the wilderness, in the woods, out in the dirt and the muck. And so my allergies are really acting up today. We have some guests who have been traveling, traveling, traveling in an RV. And now they're in the studio and they have a little bit more space. So y'all, yeah. welcome, <laughs> welcome. You. We are welcoming a couple who um, is doing something that I could not do. Number one, living in an RV mm -hmm. with two children that you homeschool, mm -hmm. traveling constantly. And, and when you just gave me your itinerary, you're going from here to Tennessee to Oklahoma, back to Florida. Yeah. Okay, I was a dispatcher for a trucking company for 38 years. Let me tell you how you should do it. From here <laughs> to Florida, and then the other way, guys. Y'all are doing it. I was going to say a bad word. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it backwards. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how this started, and then let's share your let's share your life story. Go for it. Okay. All right. So um, Nathan was traveling constantly a lot of times without us just because of you know the calendar began to rule our lives mm -hmm. we we live for the calendar mm -hmm. and Nathan was doing over 250 dates a year yeah schools mm -hmm. school assemblies uh, colleges things like that and um, so he came home when was that hey, uh, March mid-March in mid-March when COVID was hitting. When, when it just happened everything, when everything shut down yes. yep he drives home, we're excited to see him, and then the next day we wake up and he's got email after email that, how many schools? 104. 104 mm -hmm. schools were canceled. Shut down. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Due to COVID. And so at first, you know, that panic sets in, you know, that's our livelihood. That's how we make it. Mm -hmm. um, we were in the process of buying my dream home. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so and your dream this, home is now about this big. Yes, yes. So God has a sense of humor, <laughs> yes, let me tell does. you. Um, so we started, a peace came over us, and we began praying, God, what do you want us to do? And I told him, I think God wants us to go to the wilderness. And he goes, okay. So we start running through national parks. Mm -hmm. The wilderness, you a know. A lot of them were closed. They were yeah. closed. They were and closed. And so that's not yes. what God was talking no, about. No, no. Uh. And so <clears throat> we came to the realization that he wanted us to go to the desert. So we packed up, went to the desert, and we stayed in the desert in a tent for 40 nights. Mm -hmm. Not meaning to, just praying every day and You're getting You're visions, dreams. No, I'm not getting oh Killing God. rattlesnakes. In a tent. Yeah. yeah in a tent. My yeah. idea, camping is the holiday inn. Yeah, same here. We're, <laughs> I, I'm a glamper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not, yeah, yeah. He just ripped all that away from me. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, after 40 days in a tent. 50 days in, total. 50 days total. Oh we stayed gosh. on a farm for a little bit and helped on a farm for 10 days. Uh huh. And then we came home and, God put it on my heart to sell everything and be mobile. And so I, that's what I did. I'd come home and I'd say, hey, I need you to get off that chair. I just sold it. And I just <laughs> sold story. everything. And she then sold, it got to the She point. sold the rug out from underneath my feet. Yeah, True like, story. Hey, move your feet. I got to roll that up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I hit. So first off, too, um, he goes, I think we should back out of that house. And I was like, why would God put it on the market? It's my dream home. Why would he do that? And then yeah. I, you know, and he said, okay. I was like, I'm going to put a fleece out in front of the Lord. If I'm supposed to back out of the deal, then we're going to get a phone call that something's wrong with the house and they have to say, but we'll fix it. Mm -hmm. And so we got a phone call. Hey, we turned on the water. There's water pouring out of the ceiling, oh, but no. we'll fix it. And I was uh -huh. like, yep. uh -oh. out. Uh, so yeah, we did. We sold everything. We got to a place where, you know, we started asking, did we miss a step? Did we add to it? What are we supposed to do now? And three hours later, we got a phone call from a family that follows him, um, you know, and the stuff he did in schools. And they said, God put it on our hearts to give you something. Um, and they gifted us a 2016 Jayco Alante um, with 4,000 miles on it. You are kidding. I'm no. not kidding. Now, God does have a powerful way of getting to you, doesn't <laughs> yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. And then, so then you can start talking about Yes, yeah, so and then so from there we, you know, in, in the journey of the story of our lives of um, having a heart for, uh, God just had met us with amazing grace from my past and 
and that and there was a season and a lot of brokenness that the father had put on my heart to do tent meetings and so four years ago we had bought this big white tent um, called a Genesis Eureka, a Eureka Genesis so we did some tent meetings in Indiana but the tent was so big and it, it took more of a team than what we realized we had bought so we put it in storage mm -hmm. and then so when we came back um, from the wilderness and God had given us this RV and, and we met with a couple and they said man we had some ideas of wanting to do tent meetings and some cool stuff kind of aligned and I said well, well we have a big white tent uh -huh. and we put the tent up in Indiana um, and this was in the, this, the, this early early fall probably September yep. and we did some tent meetings called Jesus meetings and hundreds came and then somebody at that meeting said I feel like I'm supposed to give you this they gave us a generator that was big enough to run the thing and then somebody uh, at, at, a, at uh, another gathering at a, at a church camp type meeting at, uh, at the Feast of Tabernacles actually we were out camping and somebody at the last day said I feel like God's supposed to we're supposed to give you this and they gave us the trailer to pull the tent so all these things are starting to be given to us so now we we realize that we're uh, we're just doing tent meetings. Um, we live in an RV. Mm -hmm. We have more peace. Our dream house has definitely changed. Yes, yeah. We have more peace than we've ever had, um, and and that's kind of what we're doing. And actually, in the area here in, in LJ, we we've been meeting with some pastors and some some ministries that mid April May we're going to be bringing the big white tent here. We're we're doing some in eastern eastern Tennessee and here, and mm -hmm. we just believe that. Well, we've been saying that I know 2020 has been a chaotic year. But it didn't take God by surprise. No. And that no. we really feel that it, it's hard at times when you see all the chaos. But we believe that the enemy's lost containment, that he's yeah. lost the ability to continue to suppress the believers. And that I think when you kick the horn, hornet's nest of people who love the Lord, mm -hmm. um, and I think 2020 has showed us that the things we've taken for granted can be taken from us. Oh, yeah. And that I feel like the church and the believers are finding their voice mm -hmm. um, and that we're just going to keep trusting the Lord. And I think there's one of the a great awakenings happening. Um, so what the enemy means for evil, God means for good is what we know it says in the book of Genesis with Joseph's life. So mm -hmm. that has been our focus. The RV has been, we call it our Casa de Shalom. Yep. Um, we home, house of peace. She, she homeschools our, our son and our daughter. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I did blow it when I said. That's, a, <laughs> that's all right. He, he's a cute kid, man. Our son's <laughs> adorable. So uh, that's kind of been our, our journey uh, leading up to that. But even before, before that, it was just really just, we've learned that grace is more than a word. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. And from my, my past of, um, I was a, broken kid, broken family. At 23, I was in a bad accident. Um, I was an idiot battling with drugs and addiction, um, mm -hmm. running from the Lord. Uh, I was a hater of God, honestly, because I was raised in the church and my parents got divorced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, I... And if uh, there was really a God, why did your family not right. continue to be a perfect family? Yeah, and my dad yeah. was an evangelist, so I was very much in the church world circle. Mm -hmm. So I was really mm -hmm. bitter. So I ran from all that and went to the world, and I always, we always say that the enemy counterfeits everything. Mm -hmm. He's a counterfeiter, so mm -hmm. the drugs, the alcohol, all these distractions, he's just trying to counterfeit what we feel is the presence of God in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Giving you a feeling of feeling good, but it never gives you peace. Mm -hmm. Then I was in a really bad wreck at 23, and my, my passenger had lost her life, and uh, her family, would, not knowing me, forgave me instantly. Um, and her name was Priscilla Owens, and uh, this family forgave me, and... Uh, God intersected my life there, and grace became more than a word. It became an experience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Even though the family forgave me, Indiana didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was sentenced to 15 years of prison at 23, but I just kept pursuing the heart of God. Um, God stepped in. We got released 11 years early. That was in 2013. A lot of cool stories in there. Um, so, Did you end that experience with somebody in the prison system that brought you to the uh, Lord, or did you just find your way? Honestly, when the family forgave me and my, my upbringing, there's that verse in, in Proverbs, raise your child up in the way and he'll yes, return and he to it. Yes. And, and so, you know, when that family forgave me, grace became more than a word. It was like mm -hmm. in my face, because I knew what grace, forgiveness, mercy mm -hmm. was. I just hadn't experienced it, I right. feel. Right. It was all head knowledge to me. Mm -hmm. So when I went to prison, I told my mom, God, Mom, I feel like, you know, I know God's getting involved. He didn't cause it. It was my stupid actions. I, it's my fault the family has forever impacted. Um, but they have chosen love over hate in this moment. And so I just feel like, will you send me a Bible? And I started seeking out God's face. And I always say, when, you know, once you begin to surrender, 
Um, God's favor isn't fair, right? When you really get in right in alignment with Him and you repent and you turn your heart around and you want to run after Him, He can begin to really show you your purpose, your value, and your mm -hmm. worth. And so a lot of things happen in that. And then 2013, when I got released, we started my journey of battling suicidal thoughts in high school and middle school and my substance abuse struggles and a lot of the brokenness had opened up some doors for me to get into high schools and colleges and do some big Christian events and that mm -hmm. just kind of took and, off. And to do a Christian event in a school. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. sometimes, yep, yep. And, and, <clears throat> and when we first, we got married, we're, we're working on six years of marriage now, right, six? Mm -hmm. um, when we first got married, we, we knew Alexis was like, I think we should sell everything and do like an RV and bus and just travel as a family. Um, that was the intent. Mm -hmm. Things took off like crazy though, and the calendar, not intentional, you know, the, the routing went from flight times here to flight times yeah. there, and, and the calendar kind of just consumed our time, not intentionally. So even though COVID's been a, a time of uh, hurting, and there's a lot of been, a, there's been a lot of destruction when it comes to sickness and we know those people have lost their lives and, mm -hmm. and there's just a, a lot of un, un, unknowings and, and financially the struggles for us it's um it's realigned us and refocused us and and really let us really get to the place that the main thing's the main thing mm -hmm. and that the last seven years of doing youth mental health and substance abuse and and, and preaching the gospel that we are in his image and his likeness, and so that means we co-create. We love to build, we love to have businesses, we love to do graphics, we love, mm -hmm. that's what we do, we're, we're real estate, we, we wanna be successful, mm -hmm. and so a lot of times as people, we will add to what God's called us to do, mm -hmm. yeah. and it brings a, it can bring a place of anxiety because you, now you're so busy and you have so many irons in the fire, and we, right. we add to more than what God's yeah. called lateral, us to do. Lateral mm -hmm. momentum. Mm -hmm. There's good and there's God, and a lot of times we add to it, and it can be lateral momentum. So now we're so focused on laser-focused, wilderness-driven families are our, our, our ministry, and it's the two priorities of the ministry is family priority mm -hmm. um, and a wilderness mindset, which means we learned when we went to the wilderness that... Uh, we were preaching and sharing at, at, at conferences and churches and places that surrender and self-preservation don't live together in the, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We say we're surrendered, but there's a lot of times we're still very self-preserving. Mm -hmm. And so it's like he put our feet to the fire. You want to preach that, Nathan? You guys want to mm -hmm. teach that? Let me put you in the wilderness and see how surrendered you really are and die to self. So, um, well, I told you about a young family in New Orleans that I would love for you to meet. I'd love for y'all to route yourselves through New Orleans one day. Mm -hmm. And, and meet this young couple because you talk about taking a leap of faith. You know, mm -hmm. they left everything convenient in Canton, Georgia, and went to New Orleans, which is like about as bad as the wilderness, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and they've been there now for seven, eight years. And, and their lifestyle is one of happiness and contentment, and mm -hmm. that's what y'all are living. Yeah. You know? yeah. And mm -hmm. it's a decision you make. Yeah. 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 What about your families? Do your families now you you talked about your mom? Yeah. Do you still have a good relationship with your mom? Well, the wild part in that, so my parents got divorced when I was twelve. Mm -hmm. Um, when the accident happens at twenty three, um, they had both my mom and my dad had both gotten remarried and had both gotten divorced again. They started driving up to see me to carpooling together. Carpooling together. Mm -hmm. And ended it, up back together. Yeah. They ended up remarrying. I love it. They, I and love so, it. so it's um, they their home base is still when we're not traveling uh, is in Indiana. Uh -huh. uh, my grandma misses us like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and your family is. Yeah, my mom was actually coming this past week with his sister and her husband, and then the weather got crazy. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and she's the youngest of eight. Oh yeah. wow. Wow. Now a little bit about your background. Were you um, raised in a church? Yep, I was raised in a church, non-denominational, but I think it was more of like a branch off of like Pentecostal mm -hmm. or something. Right. Um, very charismatic, and uh, but I grew up in a home where it was do as I say, not as I do, mm -hmm. and so it seemed. And I think that's the problem with um, most teenagers that walk away from church. We see that you know they make it all through Sunday school, all through youth. RAs, GAs, um, yep. all the youth groups, yep. And then they walk away. Well, why is that? Because they see a very hypocritical lifestyle behind the scenes. Your mom, you know, your family goes to church. They do these things. 
but they teach you, they say to do one thing, but they show you a different way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So um, we are big on when we get in an argument or when we um, mess up and speak to our kids in a way we shouldn't, we humble ourselves and go to them and say, you know, mommy shouldn't have said that. That did not please God. Uh -huh. You know, God is still working on me. And because I want them to see that when you make a mistake, you don't bury it under the rug or, and I'm not the parent that I can make no mistakes and you know, you can't see me in my vulnerability. We humble ourselves and we go to them and we apologize and we say, can you pray for us and help us do better? Mm -hmm. Because we make mistakes too. Because I think that's key when your kids can see that. Because for me, it's like, mom didn't make any mistakes. Even mm -hmm. when she did, like, you better mm -hmm. not talk about it or mention right. it or. Right, yeah. <laughs> and so that gets confusing. Um, so yeah, I was the youngest out of eight. I grew up in church. Um, my mom and dad divorced when I was really young. Um, uh, I, I wasn't like the spoiled baby. I was the punching bag baby oh, and wow. the verbally abused baby. Mm -hmm. And so just growing up in a lot of chaos mm -hmm. and um, not really understanding how to deal with emotions and stuff. Um, so I've had to work through that as an adult, um, figuring out, you know, and with our kids too, being on helping them like sort through feelings and things because mm -hmm. that's that's important to teach your kids as they're growing up. Like, okay, you feel angry. Let's work through that. How do mm -hmm. we healthily work through that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't taught that. Yeah, I think for both of us, it's been <clears throat> un unfortunately because of pressure of 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 perception that, and it's a natural thing. So when we're in high schools or colleges or anywhere, we always talk about peer pressure because mm -hmm. we, we don't like to admit it, but most people care so much what others think. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And so when you have the family dynamic, you know, for me and for her, it was, you know, on the outside, you put on this fake face and everything's great, but behind closed doors, it wasn't. And so what we're really big on with our kids and what we love our RV is that our heart is that our RV is church. It's the ecclesia. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. that we live behind scenes, hopefully to please God and to put on our Sunday best face mm -hmm. and attitude yeah. every day when we wake yeah. up and mm -hmm. to live. And so when we go to church, we do ministry. It's like the vitamin. So yeah. that's our heart is getting people to know that if we can live behind closed doors in our prayer closet and live in our home with our kids and to be the example of what it is to be men and women of faith and to be mm -hmm. men and women that pray and men and women right. that study and stand on the truth of the Word of God, mm -hmm. um, that's going to help our kids raise up to saying, you know what, they, do, they weren't perfect, they, they, they would admit when they were wrong, mm -hmm. but they also, I know what I read in my book, I see my mom and my dad behind closed doors making that important. And so that's been a problem, I think, with a lot of youth and old people. We're, we're okay. so afraid, and social media hasn't helped it. We all wanna no. put out the best persona yeah. of our great life, but inside we're just broken and right. hurting, and we're, we're afraid to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and I told you about, because we talked about suicide before we came on the air, when my daughter passed away, um, self-inflicted gunshot to the head. Mm. Mm. I called my director, and I said, you know, I explained it to him. He came down to the funeral home and he said, take all the time you need, take all the time you need. After 10 days, I had to go back to work. If I had not been able to share it with my viewers, with my friends, with family, I would have gone spiraling into a nightmare myself. Mm -hmm. But I was able to share it with people who, who loved me and blessed me and helped me and got me through it. And now as we approach the anniversary of her death, I used to cry all the time, and now I don't mm -hmm. cry, and that scared me. Yeah. And I said, I don't know why I don't cry anymore, because my way of dealing with it was to cry constantly, and when I was on the air, I would cry, and tears would just pour down my cheeks, and then one day, the tears stopped, mm -hmm. and it scared me, because I said, did God take away my love for my child? Did God, what, why did God take this feeling from me? Mm -hmm. But he took away the pain yeah. Yeah. because there's nothing else I can do to love her any more than I loved her. And <clears throat> the, the thing was suicide. Her daughter was young. Her daughter was 23, 24 when her mom did this. 
And um, you remember what state you were in at 23, 24. My granddaughter's mm -hmm. just finished college, just gone, you know, living in Alaska, living her dream. And then this happens with her mother. And so um, my grandmother also committed suicide mm -hmm. on my father's side. And so you think about those things. Um, is this heredity? Is it something that, you know, um, she happened to be taking a medication? And you said that you had thoughts of suicide. Yeah. When, when you did, did you have thoughts of suicide because of something somebody had given you, something somebody yeah. said to you? Why did well, you think about it? Well, for, for, for me, I think it was, uh, I always say it this way, and, I, and, and in the space we, in the last many of years, I, when I first started sharing in high schools and colleges, it was a lot more about substance abuse because of my wreck. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be easy for me to probably talk around like prom time, don't drink mm -hmm. and drive, the choices. Right. Right. When we started doing it, I started realizing that there was so much of my high school days of suicidal thoughts and some of the self-injury and some of the, the, just some of the mental, low emotional. And so I began to do a lot of stuff about suicide um, and learn a lot. And, and for one thing that I always say is that there's a lot of us that it's not that we wanted to die. We just didn't know how to deal. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how to deal with brokenness. We didn't know how to deal with emotions because mm -hmm. emotions can lie to us. Mm -hmm. We may feel alone. We may feel isolated. We may feel like someone's talking about us, right? Mm -hmm. And the feeling, it's valid, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean it's based in reality. And so for me, I had made a lot of poor choices because of drugs and alcohol and, and a lot of verbal abuse that I had experienced and emotional abuse. There were just days that I just didn't want to deal with it mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't so much that I wanted to die as the driving force but I mean I, I at 18 I, I was on the brink of hanging myself and mm -hmm. uh, at my sister's um, garage um, and, and I spoke to a we did a, we did a documentary called connecting the dots uh, last year all about youth mental health and I was able to speak at Harvard to one of the leading doctors in the youth mental health spaces globally Dr. Patel and, and I heard from his mouth that uh, he said, you know, Nathan, almost 80 some percent, and I don't quote for sure, because this mm -hmm. isn't, but as I recall our conversation, it was 80 some percent, he said, of people that get m prescribed some kind of medicine mm -hmm. doesn't really need the medicine. Like they're mm -hmm. over, they're over mm -hmm. prescribing so many because, exactly. and most of it, what I've learned, people just need to find people that can listen mm -hmm. and intentionally like just to know that their voice is being heard mm -hmm. and if we can just learn to really listen and allow people to share their brokenness and, and allow them to be transparent mm -hmm. to know that it's a safe place to talk about your crap mm -hmm. forgive mm -hmm. me on that but 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 mm -hmm. really oh, yeah. that that transparency and so it's not a, that's not every because there are some that when their medications get involved and there are you know, chemical imbalances because I feel like just the fallen world we're in. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But we we are, it seems like we just want to put medicine in front of people's faces all the time. Right, um, we do that. Yeah. And a lot of times I think prayer um, and the presence of God in your life, it's not going to solve it per se automatically. But right. man, community is everything. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to take a commercial break and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more Wilderness driven family. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Don't know how you do it. But um, I love that you're sharing your story with people. And do you have pictures of y'all living in tents? We, yeah, we, we, we do. do. That is the coolest thing. I want you to share your website with people when we come back. So we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back in just a minute. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, 
making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. When traveling internationally, know where you're going and what the environment is. Also, don't dress to stick out. Dress to blend in with the environment and the culture. Make sure that you put minimal information on your luggage tags. Airlines actually track your bags, which you can follow through your app anywhere domestically and internationally. Also have a medical plan. We have mobilized rescue system. These systems are the only integrated medical technology that can integrate to your phone and be used abroad and domestically for any medical emergency that you have. If you have any questions or concerns about travel security or training, please contact Titan International. Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. High-speed Wi-Fi, not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, guys, share your website again. We did that on Facebook. Tell people how to find you. WildernessDrivenFamily.com. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you can go to Facebook or social medias. That, just type in Wilderness Driven Family. You'll see a picture of our family. Um, you can type in Alexis Harmon or Nathan Harmon and kind of see what we're doing. Um, but that's kind of where we're. And from here, you go to Tennessee, yeah. to so, Oklahoma. Yep. And then back to Florida. Yeah, southern, southern Georgia, Florida. So, Backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, here's the thing, though. Funny, funny story is how much God wants us. We're big believers that when you're comfortable, God can't use you as well as what he wants to. Because if you're comfortable, you begin to think that maybe you're doing something. It's you. But really, he won't share his glory. We know this, right? Uh -huh. So when we left Indiana, because I understand why we understand why birds fly south for the winter now, because yeah. we live in an RV. Yeah. It's not a Four Seasons RV. Yeah. It's a blessing, but it, it gets cold and yes. drafty. Yes. So we left Indiana seven weeks ago, and we're like, okay, we got to go south. And so, but he hasn't allowed us. We've Every place, every every venue, every fellowship, every church that we've been able to share, because we're just casting a vision because we're bringing these tents all through here in the spring and the summer. And we just believe that God's going to do amazing things here in the hills of eastern Tennessee and northern Georgia and here in these mountains. And mm -hmm. we just really believe. And there's a lot of prophecies from Billy Graham and a lot of stuff that, honestly, that an awakening. So we're just like, all right, God, we're going to trust that. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to get below the freeze line, <laughs> and everywhere we go, it freezes. It, literally, we were in southern Georgia last week. Actually, and it froze. It froze down there. I know. So, we we would much rather route this Miami, right? Yes, uh, yeah. Now we did plan to go back to the wilderness, back to the desert, mm -hmm. to regroup and pray. And someone came uh -oh. to gotcha. the tent meetings in North Carolina and they came to us and they said we want to get you in contact with um, teachers down here and pastors and churches and we we're like we need to pray about that because we're real big on we want to be arrows we don't want to be a wasted arrow we want to go where God sends us mm -hmm. we don't want to just go shoot the breeze we want to be intentional mm -hmm. so we prayed and we we're like okay that's what we're supposed to do and when we got here you know we're right above the freeze line we're like <laughs> wait a second <laughs> So, so That's where he wants us. In the last seven weeks, we went or six weeks. We went from we were in Western Tennessee, and then we went back to Johnson City, Eastern Tennessee, and then we came here to Northern Georgia, and then we went to Black Mountain, North Carolina, and then we went down to 
Waynesville, Georgia, which is mm -hmm. right down by, and it fro and so everywhere it's literally been like 35, 40 uh -huh. at uh -huh. night. But uh -huh. so now we're going back to Eastern Tennessee because um, we're gonna, we know the first tent meetings are gonna happen at probably around Johnson City. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we're gonna be coming to this area um, and just really just trying to trust and learn to really hear the voice of what God's asking mm -hmm. us to do and just mm -hmm. trusting in that. But it's uh, it's been a wild, Journey. Sure you said it. I don't know if we were online yet, but you just said that homeschooling and that small space. Yes. Um, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing, and it's also it's always it's, it is a boiling pot because mm -hmm. we're we're always as a family face to have to really talk about. It's just made us t a, a more tight unit. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, there's a Hebrew word that's called ichad, which is one. And that we, as a husband and wife, and as a family, we want to be one. And so, so often, when we were at home, and probably many families, it's easy to kind of shut the door on somebody or just go away and just not deal with things. <laughs> but we, as a You're family, You're also surrounded by distractions, which uh -huh. you can hide behind. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so we've learned just to um, have to learn to really navigate through our stuff. And we've learned that a lot of times that the things that I see in her, she sees in me that can be uncomfortable. God uses that as a mirror because he's refining us and refining mm -hmm, us and mm -hmm. refining us. And for her to homeschool our kids and to see Ashton learning to read, and that was to me was the coolest part. To We decided to homeschool because of our, our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. and well, it wasn't just because of our lifestyle, but yeah. But, but With COVID too. Yeah. COVID. And, COVID yeah. and, well, I've been homeschooling him since he was in kindergarten. Yeah. He started in a Christian preschool. And then they were funneling seven preschool classes into one uh -huh. uh, kindergarten class, and so it filled up too quick. Uh -huh. And I said, what do we do? I started looking at the schools, what they offered, and I was like, I'm going to homeschool. He goes, you are? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and there were many times I'd call him, and I'm like, I'm not homeschooling I can't anymore. Uh -huh. I'm getting a full-time job putting him in school. And he goes, okay, honey, whatever you need to do. I'm like, that's not what I need. I need you to encourage me. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But, but now he's learning to read. Uh -huh. He's reading no, now. No, not now he's learning well, to well, read. Well, he's, he's been reading. But yeah, for me, yeah. the coolest thing for me as, as a husband, as a father, is to see that the ability to trust God and just to spend time and that Alexis is helped Ashton now he's reading mm -hmm. and, and it's like and he's a math genius and, and isn't really, that something yeah. yeah yeah so I get I feel blessed because I get to experience him learning I don't get a paper home showing mm -hmm. me what he learned you know that day mm -hmm. I get to experience mm -hmm. it and so it's been the biggest blessing because I've realized my son's a genius like he is a ge he's a math whiz mm -hmm. we'll be in the car and we'll say we're 27 minutes away, and he goes, that's blah, blah, blah. How many uh, miles? Yeah. No, second. No, he said second. Oh, my gosh. Like that. And so one day Nathan goes, Alexis, get out your calculator and type that in and see if it's correct. And it was, and we're like, yeah. that is wild. does it, just yeah. loves to throw That is crazy. Numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, I, I just, in all that's happening, and, and the tensions and stuff. I just think that we just got to continue to know that no matter what, God's in control. We got to trust Him. We got to keep praying. I got to ask you this: You travel so much. Yeah. How do you vote? How do you get to go vote? So before we, before we left, do you have a residence? Yeah. Well, yeah. So we voted um, the last residency we were at before we came into the RV, From Indiana. Uh -huh. and we we did early voting okay. so we could get it done before we were yeah. on the road travel. And we're actually praying about it. Um, we're going to be in Johnson City tomorrow and then we, we may just go the next eight mi eight, eight hours and just go and, and, and be in D.C. on the 6th. And mm -hmm. on, I would love to see y'all there. Yeah. 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 Are, you, are you going to? No, I'm not, but my friend Bay Cagle is going to be there yeah. and um, she and her family and they have just, they put so much energy and so much love and so yeah. much into making America open their eyes to God is still in control. Yeah. Right. He yeah, really he is, is still in control. He, he is. is, for sure. And so that's, we just cling to that promise, you know? Yeah. That, that no matter what. That, that and from Johnson City to um, D.C., it's only about, what, 600 miles? Yeah, yeah. yeah, probably like six, I think it's like six hours if you can yeah. get there, about five hours, actually. So, and there's also some trains. So we're not, we're not for sure. Mm -hmm. we're, we're That'd really, be awesome, though, if y'all could do that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're really big of just saying we don't want to just do anything. God, we want you to order our steps. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some friends going there. And so... 
we're praying about it. We want to go just because everyone's going. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. We also have kids, and so right. there's the wisdom of you just we're just praying. Well, through what all a of teaching that. experience for your children yeah. to see America come together in the strength of numbers of good conservative Christians. Right. Yeah. You know, because there are a lot of good conservative Christians right. that are going to be in D.C. So yeah. Yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. So it's just been a cool journey. Um, now, when you go to Florida, <laughs> is it like two days in the warm weather, or is it? We're, we're not going to be there super long, actually. <laughs> well, it's probably not going to be warm it once we get there. We'll, they'll probably be like the first Norwegian ever in the last 15 years blowing through when, Florida. When we were in, was it Waynesville? Waynesville. The woman there said, um, I've lived here 40 years, and in 40 years, it's never been this cold. Oh, my God. I, I, we almost feel like we're Jonah. Everywhere we go, they're like, get out of here, right? Like, bring. So God's just keeping us uncomfortable, um, uh, keeping us focused on mission. We're, yeah. just, we're really big. A verse that's really big to us is in Jeremiah 16, it says that, uh, that he'll send out fishers of men, and you'll fish for them. We know Jesus used that terminology, but then it says that he'll send out hunters, and you'll hunt for them. And so we just feel in the season that it's not about just casting these giant nets, which still works to inspire people and to yeah. give people the gospel, but really it's specific, you're hunting, right? And like, mm -hmm. so to hunt, you know your prey, you're on point, you're on mission. Mm -hmm. You don't just go out and go hunt a buck and, and say, I'm just today gonna have clue, no clue what I'm doing, I'm gonna stumble across the buck. You mm -hmm. may get lucky, mm -hmm. but to hunt, you gotta be precise and you gotta have strategy, and you gotta mm -hmm. know what you're doing. So we're so laser focused on these tent meetings that we know God as well giving us the RV, the trailer, so much stuff that mm -hmm. we're just like, okay, God, we're going to trust you, mm -hmm. and we're going to raise up a banner of Christ in these tent meetings and just point people back to doing Bible things, Bible ways. That's our yeah. heart. Has there ever been a day that you look back and say, I really wanted that dream house? No. No. That no, is amazing. I, you know, I'm so thankful because I've told him several times, man, if I knew that simplifying my life would have made homeschooling easier, mm -hmm. would have made just life easier. Mm -hmm. I don't have distractions. And if I could give anyone advice who homeschools and who feels overwhelmed, um, simplify. You don't need all the extra gadgets. Mm -hmm. I painted our refrigerator chalkboard. Mm -hmm. That's our chalkboard we use. And it's just simple. It's so simple. We have mm -hmm. a craft box. You don't need all the extra gimmicks that, you know, we follow all these like, um, homeschooling gurus on Instagram and we see all their cool things that they put out there but you don't need it all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your kids just give them a craft, make right. it up as you go and they love it. <clears throat> yeah. Well and, and the lesson your children would learn going to DC because I remember as a child, eighth grade child, the day that uh, John Kennedy was killed. Mm -hmm. I remember that moment of them calling mm -hmm. an assembly out by the flag and lowering the flag to half staff mm -hmm. and I still get cold chills thinking about yeah. that. It's a moment in history that wasn't a good moment but it was something that I'm so thankful that I was a part of right. because I remembered the reverence to the flag and I remembered mm -hmm. the reverence mm -hmm. to our president you mm -hmm. know and and those are things that um, your children will never forget. Yeah. Never yeah. forget. Yeah. Yeah, I remember exactly where I was, 9-11, and mm -hmm. yeah, just you, those are a moment of impact, and yeah, for us to teach our children how to be a part, and what their role is in this, mm -hmm. and what the importance is, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. Now, if people want to contact you, and you're scheduling now for your tent meetings, and, and you've got some planned, and you're going to be weaving here and there, um, what kind of time frame do you... Uh, so we're what if somebody's sitting at home in Cherokee County, Georgia, and wants to have a tent meeting? Yeah, they just need to go to the website, and there's a contact button. Um, that uh, it's Wilderness Driven Family or NathanHarmon.org. Those those are places that you can you can go, and there's a contact button, mm -hmm. or you can email directly to uh, Nikki N I K K I at uh, NathanHarmon.org. It's all that. If, there's a contact button, so if they just wanted to know there's, there's a contact, or go to Facebook or any of our any of our anywhere you can find our stuff. As soon as a message, we have people that are always monitoring all the all the, the stuff and then mm -hmm. Nikki would start and our team would start talking about what it takes it doesn't take a lot we, we're a pretty uh packaged unit mm -hmm. we just to have a tent meeting first and foremost we got to pray about it to know that there's only so much time mm -hmm. and so we don't just go put tents up there anywhere we right. really we we've had a lot of people ask us in contact and we start praying about it we start talking to them we start really feeling um, and, and asking the Lord is this where he wants us to go mm -hmm. um, but but a lot of times it is and then to have a tent we people were like, what's it cost? And I said, honestly, you need to figure out how to get us chairs, right. porta pots, and the land. Mm -hmm. We bring everything else. That's all mm -hmm. it takes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even take a lot of overhead to get bring tents there. We just uh, 
we, we've, God's given us a lot of strategy mm -hmm. um, and, and laser focused, and we just trust the Holy Spirit in that. So there's not a big overhead even to get us there, other than the fact we need permission from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then if that happens, we just, we, we ask them to help us get the chairs and then the space and porta pots. Yeah. Let me ask you something. In speaking to 250 schools a year, yeah. do you get stories of success? Oh, yeah. from people do you get a message that you're like that's why I was there yeah that's exactly why I was there so you understand we, it mm -hmm. we and so your life speaks is what we if you typed in your life speaks is what the our organization our company calls it just the high schools and, and the mental health and substance abuse and we've gotten hundreds mm -hmm. of emails and messages that literally has said that today I was going to take my life mm -hmm. and then this assembly happened and it changed everything. Mm -hmm. I got help. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we literally have hundreds, if not thousands, of messages from students and adults and broken people that God sent us there at the right time, at the right moment. Mm -hmm. um, He's always right on time. Yeah, he is. He's always right on he time. Yeah. I, I went to one, um, I'm, I went to a lot of them, but there was one where I was sitting at the side of the bleachers with the teachers and we started hearing clanking. Now it's silent. It amazes teachers, but students are so locked into what he's saying. And we started hearing clanking under the bleachers, and we're like, what is that? So we're all looking under the bleachers, getting our phones out to, like, lights. People were dropping razors and things that they were using to cut themselves. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Tons. Wow. Just yeah. clanking and dropping under there. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. We're just, we're just after just the heart of the Lord. And, and sadly, we are in a society where um, I know children who've committed suicide. I know children who've cut themselves. I know children who have um, been addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of them who fall through the cracks and, and yeah. nobody speaks to them and nobody reaches them. So yeah. Yeah. it's amazing that you've been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a book? Have you written a book? We're in the middle of writing a book. Uh, it's... <laughs> So it's, it, I've, I'm working on a book called The Five. Uh, it's The Five Habits of the Heart and the Mind, which is transparency, accountability, hard work, choices, and valuing people. But uh, we're, it's almost done. I actually didn't, we're on like chapter nine or 10. It's only like 11 chapters. But so I'm ADD, mm -hmm. which I always say is the greatest blessing the Lord's ever given me because I can get a lot of stuff started and a lot of stuff done. It just takes longer than I want it to. Yeah. So we're in the midst of, of, of writing a book. Um, but it's a battle too because I don't, for us, it's always been we don't do stuff just to do stuff and and in the space of public speaking or even doing live events or everyone's trying to create products to sell to help fund mm -hmm. and for us it's not we have never wanted just to write a book just to sell a book I want to mm -hmm. write a book that changes people's lives mm -hmm. and so it's been a sort of wrestling because I know when we put that out there I want it to be the heart and, and birth by this what God wants us to say mm -hmm. so there's never there's never a rush, right? Mm -hmm, so it's, mm -hmm. we are in the middle of writing a book. And again, uh, tell me the name. It's called The Five. It will be called The Five, but we're constantly rewriting and rethinking and adding stuff. And um, so that, that, yeah, so it's, it's ha healthy habits of the heart and the mind. Um, and it's biblical principles of transparency and accountability, which is all about confession and opening up and talking mm -hmm. about your stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah. then also doing your part. You got to work hard. Faith mm -hmm. without works is dead, you know? Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. hard work and there's never a wrong time to do what's right, making good choices. And the most important, which is the value of people and the power right. of community. So right. we're writing it. It's not, I don't have a, an, a, a published date right now. But, uh, <laughs> but you're working on it. We are. I even have some people helping me write that I'm helping edit and I, I thought that was going to help me get it done but that you just can't cut corners in it. No, you, nobody can no. do what you, it's in your heart. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Now how, how often do you get to see family? So, um, our kids every night. Yeah, <laughs> our yes. kids every night. Yes. Um, every day, really. Personal. Yeah. personal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we left and went full time. When was that? Like um, two months ago? Well, well we've been living in the RV full time since middle of the summer, but we right. left Indiana because of the weather um, right at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we, that was the last time, but yeah. we talked to him. Mm -hmm. Quite often. Yeah, his sister daily. Now, even though we're a family in the wilderness, you have cell phones, you have computers, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. your people yeah. can contact you. Yep. yep. And if there were an emergency, you can answer questions from, you know, what if, do you have a hotline set up that you could talk to people? We don't. Well, we have a, so we have actually a, a text community 
that uh, if you go to the website, and if you go to Wilderness Driven Family, there's this, this Texas number, 765-379. Oh, I could look at it. But there's a number <laughs> on our website. It's our text community where people can text the community. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, it is a, it's, it's a cell phone number. It's a, tech, it's a text community, actually. It's actually from a company called Community. But mm -hmm. um, what's been challenging with this um, when you start talking about youth mental health or just suicide is that we, we never also want to sit in position where we're not a replacement for a social worker or a counselor or professional help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's a battle in this space because you get tons of people that reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And so we're always pointing people to still go to your local community, find people, mm -hmm. um, because we, we try at the beginning to try to be able to respond. We're getting thousands of messages and mm -hmm. it's, it's just not something that we can really do as well as what you'd want to do with it. And, <clears throat> and you know, sadly, there's a suicide hotline that often people reach out to, but sometimes that doesn't work either. Yeah. You know, so so there's not a perfect fix our, for this. Our, our biggest our biggest word to all of that, if you're battling, if you're even listening to this right now, is that um, you got to do it afraid, and you just got to talk to somebody close to you. Mm -hmm. You've got to find the courage, just to speak up and to speak out with family, friends. You may be afraid, you may be terrified. What are they gonna think? Mm -hmm. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it afraid, use your community, use the people around you. Um, you just can't replace that face-to-face -face conversation. Right. Well, and the other thing we found too, if, if a child goes to their parent, parents don't, you know, consume yourself with fear and try and reach them out to every professional help you can find because that gives them shame and embarrassment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then that pushes them. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. they're doing is they're confiding in you and they just want you to love, embrace, and, and talk listen. to them about it and listen, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because that's been why kids won't reach out to, um, you know, the social worker and, or the counselor in the school because they have to take professional steps to cover mm -hmm. their ends. Right. And so kids won't go there because they said, I just need someone that I can trust and mm -hmm. talk to. That's yeah. all I need, mm -hmm. and that'll fix it. I don't need you to give me somebody who's got a degree in front of their name. You know, I just need someone who will listen yeah. mm -hmm. and love me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for. When, when my daughter tried it the first two times, she tried pills. And um, um, the first time was over a broken relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nobody is worth losing your life over. Right. But that relationship was over and she couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. And then the next time was the same thing. Mm -hmm. And as a mom, I saw it the wrong way mm -hmm. because I saw it as a weakness in her, that mm -hmm. she put her faith in that man. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's very hard as a mother to take when you see mm -hmm. your child spiraling out of control over a relationship that went bad yeah. because he didn't want you anymore and he right. didn't, you know, and, and that sadly, um, I know a young man who hung himself because yeah. of his girlfriend the, being gone. That's the saddest part. Yeah. The, the, the battle we're facing right now is that we're, we're losing our ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, this generation, no matter where we are, young or old, we are all having to figure out what it is to navigate life with technology the way we yeah. are with cell phones and social media. Mm -hmm. And so we're at the precipice, really it's this, this re evolution, revolution, and I believe humanity is going to figure it out, but we're all trying to figure out how to do medical, you know, professional health care with technology or students or teachers or parents. Like, so this technological place of, because what's happening is, is it's we're, we're getting isolated unintentionally mm -hmm. and we're losing our ability to communicate mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and especially in that younger generation there's there's a whole generation of young people that's never not known these things oh, yeah. right oh yeah and so we're all having to figure out like what center on this and uh, it, it really comes down to finding the ability just to express your emotion mm -hmm. yeah. because even with, with, with your daughters I listen and when we booked y'all to be here I knew you were going to be in here in town this week, and I thought, how can I do this? It's the week of her death. Hmm. But how can I not do this? It's the week of her death. Because, yeah. you know, if we if we reach one person yes. who's right. sitting at home saying, he left me, you know, I yeah. can't live, 
Yes, you can. Yeah, 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 you yes, can. you can. And it goes back to a lot of times. It's not that we want to die. Sometimes we just don't know how to right. deal. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. A lot of times. Now, again, I don't ever say that's not medical professional. I don't have degrees. That this mm -hmm. is my experience mm -hmm. of being in front of hundreds of thousands of, of people who have battled these spaces. Mm -hmm. it, it really, the most powerful tool we have is communication. Mm -hmm. And just doing it afraid mm -hmm. and talking about it. And if you're somebody who somebody's talking to you about it, um, I know there are professional steps and there are certain things if you're in certain positions. Um, but first and foremost, you just need to listen and intentionally listen and don't be on autopilot, mm -hmm. but be right there and allow them just to get a lot of that stuff out yeah. because there's healing and mm -hmm. sharing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, My daughter's thing was, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Just, just leave it alone, I'll be fine. Yeah. I heard that over and over, I, knowing that she was not fine. We have a, a friend that, that's a, a psychologist that me and him have, have, have talked about it and um, I get aggravated. I understand the why of when some people talk about suicidal ideations or ideologies that we are professionally and legally and really it's it's all about liability why we're supposed to share and let, and, and pass them along i, I understand mm -hmm. but most of it that aggravates me and, and i'm just pretty pretty blunt about it and some people think it's not the greatest thing to talk but i think we have so much that's always worried about liability and covering our own butts mm -hmm. and our own butts and mm -hmm. our own butts mm -hmm. um we we feel like we have to go and just pass them along and, and then they get admitted or they get submitted or they get somewhere that most of the times it's not what they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really at a place, I feel like, as a country that some of the structures and the legislations and some of those things, we really should relook at it and readdress uh, that I don't know. It's just it's, we're at a really rock and a hard place because well, mental health budgeting has been cut to a point, and and President Trump did add budget money yeah. mm -hmm. for mental health, but the previous administration cut mental health down to nothing. Yeah. There was no help for anybody. Yeah. I, I really, and I don't know if this is even doable, but it, for me, it'd be hard because if if we were able to take away liability where people families or people really couldn't sue mm -hmm. because somebody talked to you about suicide right if if you if people would be able to not feel liable um i think we would see a, a, a such a healing in suicide because i could let that person just talk to me mm -hmm. and i could listen and mm -hmm. keep confidentiality because mm -hmm. they trust me mm -hmm. but what happens is because of liability and because of policies and i understand it mm -hmm we have to do what we're supposed to do right, right. and honestly that doesn't help. it's not the answer yeah. it doesn't it's help not that the person answer. and they go no. more into a shell because if yes. i talk to you about yes. suicide yep. and i know you're going to admit me mm -hmm. why the flip am i going to talk to you about right it? so right. i isolate and well, i don't yeah. talk about it and it, it makes them too it's no longer your friend coming to you to speak to you it's now um a professional case mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you've got to take and where's the relationship and mm -hmm. the yeah. genuine you know yeah, it, the connection's gone. M mental health is a very challenging, sticky, there is no one all solve all formula. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got to continue to figure out how to make it the most, the, the primary responses has to be for the best interest of the person. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that some of our policies and our things have at the core of it, mm -hmm. their best interest. I feel like right. there's a lot of prevention right. of we don't want to get sued, mm -hmm. we don't want to be mm -hmm. liable for it. Right. And, I'm, and, that, and people don't right. always agree with me on that. And yeah. I, that's where I'm a little bit of, I ruffle feathers. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I've seen too many families. I've hugged too many moms. Yeah. Oh, I've yeah. hugged too many kids. I, I've, I've lived in this space. Yep. Yeah. And what we're yeah. doing isn't necessarily mm -hmm. the best method. Well, my granddaughter being in Alaska, suicide rate in Alaska is Absolutely. the highest in the nation, mm -hmm. you know. And, and she's up there where it's just, it's depressing. There's mm -hmm. drug addiction, there's alcohol addiction, there's incest, there's everything. And mm -hmm. there's so much suicide there. And for her to be involved there, I said, wow, she kind of took on this huge burden. But if, if one person makes one, saves one life, that's and right. that's what it's about. And each one of us knows, you kind of know when somebody's down and out. I didn't yeah. know how bad, you know, everybody kept saying, did you not see it? Did you not see it? She tried it twice. Yeah, but you know, she was just battling cancer. She was just battling losing a job. Yeah. 
And I thought she was just battling, but she had really a, a huge battle going on inside her for many years. Mm -hmm. And so mental health is, is one of those things. And whether it's just talking to somebody, whether it's praying through it, whether it's, there's a way to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm so glad y'all were here this week, of all weeks, oh, to, to be here and uh, see God had a plan. Yeah. He sent you right through North Georgia, right when you needed to be. Now, we've only got a minute and a half left, so again, give us your website one more time. WildernessDrivenFamily.com. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are, you're going from here to Tennessee, mm -hmm. to Oklahoma, then back to Florida, and then in the spring, in April, you plan on being in this area with tent meetings? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, we'd love to come back and see you, and, and uh, if you're, we love you, it'll be very known in the area. We, we we will use a lot of Facebook and media to push out events and flyers mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah, it's it's thanks for having us, and we're just uh, more than anything. I feel like we could just as as a, as a country, and as as believers, or even if you're not a believer, the power of God in your life, and to pray, and to learn to trust, and to look to Him for His promises. Mm -hmm. That's uh. We, in the words and the quotes of one of my favorite evangelists, which would be Billy Graham, he said, I read the end of the book, mm -hmm. and it's all going to turn out all right. Oh, yes, yes, um, yes. And, that, yes. and that's where we just continue to stand on. Yeah, you know? yeah, so. yeah, that's right. And it is going to be okay. Sometimes, some days we wonder. Um, I've had zero sleep last night, zero, because of something that's going on. Yeah. And I just kept saying, Lord, just take it from me and just let me rest, just let me sleep. Not one wink, my eyes never closed. And I kept saying, God, this is not funny. I'm gonna look old and haggard tomorrow because <laughs> I'm really tired. But we understand that he puts us right where he wants us yeah. to be. And there's a reason right. for all of it. So That's thank right. you. Thank you so much for being here today. Guys, um, I hope that this has helped you. I hope that you have, if you know somebody who is thinking of ending their life, I hope that you will tell them to, to trust to reach out, to ask for help. Um, everybody knows that um, each and every one of us knows somebody who's hurting. We haven't reached them yet. We haven't talked to them yet. We don't really communicate. And I think your message on communication is the most important thing we can share today is if you, if you see somebody who's sinking into that depression. Um, I have a friend who's taking care of her mother in an RV who mm -hmm. has dementia. So that's a whole, and, and how she has not sunk into a deep depression is being beyond mm -hmm. me. Because your life of wilderness and mm -hmm. fun with the kids is not what she's dealing right. with. Mm -hmm. and, and I look at that and I think, please, Sandra, don't, don't get depressed yourself because it's tough. We're yeah. all fighting a battle, but we know somebody who will fight right alongside us and that's his right. name is Jesus. That's right. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thanks for being with us today, guys. We'll see you again soon, only on ETC.